I want to talk about one of my favorite objects, and that happens to be the plot object. So if you type plot tilde into a box, you get something about like this. What is the plot object? If you don't know what the plot object is, basically it's a way to take a set of data and make a two-dimensional graph out of it. So here's an example, you know, where you get like something like you might try to present in a keynote presentation. We have a list of numbers and we can change the data points and it'll change the way that that data is plotted. So that's kind of handy. This help patcher is a little overwhelming for some people. And so I was going to show a few tricks um, about how I would go about using the plot object. Not only can we draw graphs like this, but we can change um, various things about it. For example, here it's showing how to change the x and y axis in terms of their labels. Uh, we can also make these things exponential, etc. And we can also draw different styles of graphs. So here's one where we're doing, um, you know, drawing a line up to a, a circle. But we could actually change this from this lollipop chart to look some other way as well. Here it's being used as a waveform display for a buffer object. Here it's being used as an oscilloscope. Here it's being used to plot spectral data. So with all of that, um, how do you actually set this up? Well, typical uh, usage of this object would be that you make the object and then you come over, I just right clicked it and I can choose a prototype and I can get one of the prototypes that's very much like those examples in the uh, help patcher. So here's a waveform display for a buffer and here is a audio scope or an impulse response as well. And it's all set up so you don't have to do any of the work. Um, in the recent filter examples, however, people have asked, well, how would you go about setting up a custom one? So I'm going to close this patcher right here. I'll make another new patcher here. And I'll go look at the filter design help patcher. The filter design help patcher also has examples. One thing you'll notice here is there are multiple um, plots in here, what I would call subplots. And what happens is that each of these are independently configurable. And here we can see we use different colors to represent all of these. So if I were to start with something simpler, come over here, we can take, um, yeah, let's take this example right here. I'll just copy some of this stuff. Maybe I'll copy all of this stuff. Not those. Put these in my new patcher. So now we have our patcher here. We can send our data into it. What's really happening here is this is a whole bunch of points. This is just a list. Uh, the list will have a certain length if we look at the inspector. You can see what that length is. It's 512 points. And then based on whatever style information has been supplied, uh, it'll interpolate between these either by drawing a straight line or trying to do a, like a curvy line or um, nothing at all. So looking over here in the inspector, we can see there are things that we can change like the number of points but there are also things that are not included in the inspector because the inspector is for stuff that's global to the entire plot, not specific to the individual subplots. In this case, we have only one subplot. So that might seem um, like a, just a technicality, but if we were to display six or eight things here, uh, you know, this, uh, label here is something that we could change for the entire graph, but it's not, um, we're not going to change the color, for example, for all of them as an attribute. So let's change one of these attributes. 
attribute we can change here would be the number of plots. We can increase this to three. When we do this, it will recreate our object, which is to say we're going to lose all of the styling information uh, of our existing subplot, and it's going to create two more. So we see that. Now all of a sudden we don't have our little grid in the background. We don't have um, any particular data being charted, and all of these points are all looking like little circles that are overlapping each other. So how do we now set up each of these individual subplots? Well, I'm glad you asked. We'll go over to the help patcher and it will give us several different ways to approach this problem. As we saw before, this is just showing how to change the actual data. But if we go to the appearance tab, we can see that by sending things into the individual inlets, we can control the display of the individual subplots. So all of these uh, set up here, we can change the color of this, we can change the line thickness of this, and all of these coming in for the next subplot, we can use those. We can say that there's not gonna be anything at the point, and we're gonna do like a bar graph and we'll make it you know, super thick and change the color. This is, um, this is great for just tweaking around or if you wanted to automate that for some reason, but um, it can be kind of tedious to have to do this again and again and again. So there are other ways. And if we jump ourselves all the way down here to the dictionary tab, one thing we can see is that we can get the contents of any one of the subplots using this get dictionary method. We can also get the dictionary for an individual item or an individual subplot, and we could look at them here in the dictionary. Or, in addition to just getting the dictionary out, we could uh, use an edit message to any of the inlets, and it'll show us the dictionary for that subplot. So let's go back to the filter design um, plot that we were trying to copy and we'll send an edit message to its inlet. Okay, we'll just copy all of that. And when we come here, we can edit this and we'll just replace everything that's here. Ta-da! We could do the same thing for the other two and we could do something like change the color. So these are gonna be uh, red, green, blue, and alpha. So we could switch these around and make this one be you know, more of a, a green color. And we could switch this one around to be like super duper red or something like that. Okay, so we can see we've had some effect. Um, we only changed the colors on those though. We should have changed some of the other stuff so that it matches. So I'll just, I'll grab all of these. You also notice that in this dictionary editor, it has all of the data points too. So that can be kind of convenient. If you wanted to manually enter the data or copy and paste it from an Excel spreadsheet or you wanted to um, just take a look and see what is the spectral plot in there. So I'll copy, actually we don't really need to copy all of these because we don't need to do all of the markers and the labels. The markers uh, and the labels are gonna be all of these, uh, you know, the dB levels, the frequencies and this grid here. And we don't need to have those on every single subplot. We can just have them on the first subplot. So I think I'll skip some of those. So I'll, these up here and we'll just start with those. Are there any we're going to want to come back? Yeah, we'll want to come back and set the range. We'll do that in just a second. Okay. 
and oh, stray comma. Okay, and all the stuff that it. There we go. So now we have that. The range still isn't correct on this. So let's go ahead and copy out the range because the range is going to be in decibels. So the range, oops, here we go. The range starts is going to be negative 144 decibels up to six, and it's going to be displayed linear with regard to decibels. Yeah, we don't need the markers. Okay. So we'll go ahead and replace those first three range deals there and here. Okay. And now what I could do to show that this is actually working as I'm advertising that it works, that dictionary editor, is I'll push this down here and then we can go like this and this and then we'll put different uh, filter topologies for these so I can say that this one's going to be a Chevy Chev 1 and this one will be a Butterworth and this could be any type of data I just happen to be using um, filter data, and this is just pumping out lists of 512 items. So I'll go ahead and double click my load bangs. And why is that not working? It's not working because I didn't hook up the filter detail objects, of course. Now the lists will actually go to the object. There we go. And we can see the three different colors because we changed that color information. So let me just walk through this dictionary real quick. Color is the color. Thickness is how thick the line is. Point style is none. Um, if we look at the help patcher for plot, we can see the analogs for these things that are when they're done um, in this patcher right here. So when you say the point style, here we're saying define point as being a square, a dot, circle, um, or none. Those are the options that you have available to you here in the dictionary. Line style is very similar. So here up in the help patcher, we have define line. It can be linear, none, origin. Um, there's some differences in the way um, the lines in the linear are calculated um, that I won't get into right now. Our curve is going to make this like a nice smooth curve. So. Um, the other things here, um, we can add number style, right? which again you can see here. Do you want the numbers to be below the points or above the points or centered on the points or none at all? Here we're using none. Right now there's only one option for a filter. A filter can either be none or it can be an A to DB, which is to say that it's going to convert from amplitude to decibels. The domain start and end, this would be uh, explained in the dimensions. So the domain is going to be where are you starting over here, where are you ending over here, and that is uh, useful for when you then set up your domain markers. Your domain markers are going to be a vertical line at each spot that you specify. And then a domain label will draw a little number. These numbers right here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So what that label is going to say is we're going to have a pair here. We're going to say at 0, 0, write 0. At 0 0.1, write 0 0.1. At 0 0.2, write 0 0.2. If I wanted to be difficult, I could change that to be 2 tenths which is accurate but strange. And you can see here that it was updated. Same thing happens with the range. 
So we've told it that this range that we want to show is between negative 144 and 6 dB. So there it is. And then we have markers, which are the horizontal lines, and we specify the positions for those markers. Then we have labels, and we say at this position, put this label at this position, put this label at this position, put this label, etc. And we could monkey around with those if we wanted to as well. And the margin from the um, edge in is set up as an attribute in the inspector in case you need to make more room for these labels. So typically what I'm doing when I've been setting up the plot objects for all of the advanced uh, filtering tutorials is I'm starting with something that's sort of similar to what I want to show and then I go and I'll modify it. I'll add a, another subplot and I'll edit the dictionaries in here to tweak them to be exactly the way that I want them. So that's my little trick for using it and hopefully this little overview of this handy little object will be helpful. Happy patching!